We're now in our third video about lines and angles for Lesson 24. And if you missed the first two, 24A and 24B, they're linked in this description to help you out, along with some other ones. When we see this, this AB with the double arrow line on top of it, it means line AB. And the A and the B are the points on the line. And the line extends infinitely in both directions like a number line. And it's labeled with capital letters for the points. Now, the line itself can also be labeled as a lowercase letter like this, or a P or a Q or whatever it is. And then you'll see the points on it, or there'll be no points, but the points will be in capital letters. Now, I know that could drive you crazy, but you'll understand when you see the diagrams, okay? When lines are parallel, they lie on the same flat plane and never intersect. They have the same slope. We learned about slope in video 22D, the slope of a line. Well... When lines are parallel, they have the same slope as each other. So this sheet of school paper is like a flat plane. And if you look at all these blue lines on here, these are all parallel to each other. See that? So that's what we're talking about, parallel lines on a flat plane like that sheet of paper. When you see this, that's a notation for parallel lines. I tell the younger kids they can remember that because there's two L's in parallel, and they make parallel lines like that. In this diagram, we have line AB and line CD, we can write it like this. Line AB is parallel to line CD. Okay, that would be the notation. When two lines are on the same plane, the same flat surface, they will either intersect and cross each other at some point, or they'll be parallel and never meet. So look at these two lines. These lines are about to intersect, aren't they? We've got arrows on the tips, so we know they're going to continue on. This one can continue on and cross line A right at that point. So they're not parallel, are they? These two are eventually going to intersect. If they continued on, because the arrows are pointing, they would meet at this point, wouldn't they? And these are not parallel. But intersecting lines make vertical angles. So if they did continue, this angle would be vertical to that one, and they'd be the same measure, wouldn't they? If the intersecting lines make right angles, with a little box for 90 degrees, those two lines will be perpendicular to each other. All the angles will be 90 degrees here. And when you see this, this upside down T, it's the symbol for perpendicular lines. When a line crosses parallel lines, it's called a transversal. So here we've got these green parallel lines, and the orange one is the transversal that's cutting through them. Now we have three parallel lines, because it doesn't have to just be two. It could be three, it could be more. And the transversal is cutting through these lines. See? And there's angles on the inside and outside of the parallel lines. So the inside ones I've got in red, you can see they're inside these two green lines. See? Those are the angles that are on the inside of the green lines. The angles are on the outside of the green lines. I've got in purple, one, two, and seven, eight. See? Now, vertical angles are congruent, aren't they? So we know if this is angle one, it must be congruent to angle four because they're vertical angles, aren't they? And two would be congruent to three. So if we look at this, angle one is congruent to angle four. They're vertical angles. Angle two is congruent to angle three. They're vertical angles. Angle five is congruent to angle eight. They're vertical angles. And six and seven are vertical angles. They're congruent. But did you know that angle one is not only congruent to angle four, but it's also congruent to angle five and angle eight? Yeah. That's if these are parallel lines. And angle two is congruent to angle three and angle six and angle seven. See angle two and angle six. If these are vertical, if these are parallel lines, then angle two and angle six are going to be congruent. And angle two and angle seven would be congruent. All right? Corresponding angles lie on the same side of the transversal. They're both on the left side or they're both on the right side. And the angles will be both on top of parallel line, like angle one is on top of this green line and angle five is on top of this green line. See? 
that one's on top of that line and that one's on top of that line and they're both on the left side of the transversal so they're corresponding angles angle one corresponds to angle five and angle two and angle six are on the right side of the transversal that's on top of the line and that one's on top of that line those are corresponding angles or they'll both be under a parallel line so three and seven are corresponding and four and eight are corresponding see and they're all congruent four is congruent to eight three is congruent to seven one is congruent to five two is congruent to six see because they're corresponding angles all right so you might want to write that in your notes okay it is in the book all right alternate exterior angles are always found on the exterior the outside of the parallel lines so you can see this is outside the parallel lines and this is outside the parallel lines and that's the inside see so alternate exterior angles are on the outside of the parallel lines and they're opposite sides of the transversal so angle one is an alternate alternate exterior angle to angle eight see it's on the opposite sides and they're on the outside and angle two is an alternate alternate exterior angle to angle seven see they're on the outside of the parallel lines they're not on the inside in here and they're on opposite sides of the transversal now there's actually a theorem a rule that says when parallel lines are cut by a transversal alternate exterior angles are congruent so that means one and eight are congruent and two and seven are congruent alternate interior angles are always found on the interior the inside so now we're on the inside of these parallel lines see before we were on the outside of the parallel lines for the interior for the alternate interior angles we're on the inside and they're on opposite sides of the transversal so three and six are alternate interior angles and four and five are alternate interior angles they're going to the same measure when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal it's cut by this orange line transversal the alternate interior angles are congruent that's another theorem all right now I've got this really big drawing here so hopefully I'll be able to stand back far enough so you'll be able to see it knowing that vertical angles are congruent and that straight angles equal 180 degrees we can find missing exterior and interior angle measures so it's given that angle AFE is 55 degrees so here's AFE that means this one is 55 degrees well if this was the only angle we had just this little one we'd be able to find all the rest of these and it's because we know that vertical angles are congruent and straight angles are supplementary they equal 180 if this is 55 we can find this angle because that's a straight line that would be supplementary right here wouldn't it so we could do 180 minus the 55 and get 125 degrees so now we know this one's 125 degrees now if this one's 55 and this is its vertical angle then this has to be 55 we could also say that right here is a supplementary angle with this one and this one so if that's 125 that has to be 55 in order for this to equal 180 see and if that's 125 that has to be 125 because they're vertical angles and also it would be supplementary with this one right here and it would be supplementary with this one okay now corresponding angles remember corresponding angles lie on the same side of the transversal and they'll both be on top or on the bottom of one of the parallel lines okay so they're going to be on the same side as of the transversal and they're going to lie on top together or on top of the parallel lines or below the parallel lines so look at this angle and this angle these two are corresponding angles see and this one is on the right side of the transversal and this one's on the right side of the transversal this one is above the green line and this one's above this green line so we know these two are corresponding angles and if that's 125 degrees the corresponding angle has to be 125 degrees so now we found all these we know what that one is and if that's 125 that has to be 55 which means that has to be 125 because they're vertical 
And that has to be 55 because they're vertical and supplementary. See? Those are supplementary. Those are supplementary. See? So just from knowing that one little angle, we could find all these other angles. Okay? When the transversal crosses parallel lines, then this angle and this angle will total 180 degrees. When the transversal crosses parallel lines, this angle and this angle will total 180 degrees. These two together will total 180 degrees. These two inside ones right here. This one here and this one here, they're both on the same side of the transversal. This one's at the top and this one's at the bottom. They'll total 180 degrees. This one up here and this one will total 180 degrees. And these two in here will total 180 degrees, just like these two did. See? So this one right here and this one total 180 degrees. That's 55. That's 125. We could even say this one and this one. See? So we could find a lot of supplementary angles inside of here, okay? Take a look at this one. We've got some green parallel lines that are cut by this orange transversal. And if we know this is 135 degrees, then that has to be 45 degrees in order to total 180. And that means that that's 45 degrees. See? So which of these angles are complementary? Well, that's 45 degrees, which means this 3 right here is a vertical angle. It has to be 45 degrees. So these would be complementary to each other. 45 and 45 is 90. For any two angles that equal 90 degrees, see? And that also means 6 and 7 would be complementary, but it also means 2 and 7 would be complementary. So even though they're not next to each other, they're still complementary because 45 and 45 makes 90. And on which one of these are supplementary? Any two angles that total 180. So it could be 1 and 7. See? It could be 2 and 8. It could be 1 and 2. It could be 3 and 4. All right? So when you see a straight line, that is the supplementary angle. See? Now take a look at this drawing. This has got a 60 degree angle and a 120 degree angle. There's no two angles that will equal 90 degrees. 60 and 60 is 120, 120 and 120 is 240. We can't find the sum of two angles that will equal 90 degrees, so there are no complementary angles in this diagram. We see supplementary ones, like right here, and right here, and right here underneath here because they total 180, but none of these are complementary. We can't get to 90. It worked on this one because that one was 45 and that vertical one was 45, see? Then it worked. Now I want you to be really, really careful because take a look at this drawing. We have line AB and line CD, and they're cut by this transversal, but they're not parallel. Look, if we extended them, they would cross, so they're not parallel. See that? And if we know this is 60 degrees, we can still use supplementary and vertical angles to find missing measures, but line CD is not parallel to line AB, so those alternate exterior and interior angles won't be congruent. If we know this is 60, then that's got to be 120 in order for this to be supplementary. We could find that one, then that one's 120. And if that's 120, then we know that one's got to be 60 because we could do a supplementary angle right here onto the orange line, see? And if that's 60, and that's 120, that's got to be 120. See, these, this makes a supplementary, and that's vertical, so that's going to be 120, but we can't find out those. If this is the only measure we had, we're stuck now. We can't find those because these are not parallel. See? If they were parallel, we would be able to do what we did here and find the other measures. But because they're not parallel, these measures differ from these measures. These angles are different, okay? And... Actually, like the little zero is saying, if we did extend these, we'd have a nice triangle here. See that? Look at that. Okay? So, from all this, you should be ready to do that skill focus on page 291. 
If you have some trouble, you can try watching the video again, or you can go to one of these links, and the grade 8 math one explains transversals and alternate interior and exterior angles and stuff like that, and I've got the previous videos for this GED lesson. We're going to talk about using logical reasoning in the next video, Lesson 24D. We're going to actually use equations to find the degrees of an angle, all right? So make sure you understand this part, and you took lots of notes on what all these new words were. Corresponding angles, alternate exterior angles, alternate interior angles, vertical angles, and you should know all these guys by now. You should know that an acute angle is less than 90 degrees, a right angle is 90, obtuse is more than 90 but less than 180, a straight angle is 180 degrees, complementary angles total 90 degrees, supplementary total 180 degrees, adjacent angles are next to each other, they have a shared vertex and ray, non-adjacent, even though it may share a vertex here, they don't share a ray, so it's not adjacent. Okay, it needs to share a vertex and a ray. Reflex angles are more than 180 degrees, but they're less than 360. And vertical angles are opposites of each other. Okay, and that's parallel lines and that's perpendicular lines. So you need to take some good notes because you have to get all of this in your head because they're expecting you to learn an entire year of high school geometry in just five lessons. All right, so we got to do our best and take the notes as best we can and stay organized and I think you can do this and I'll see you next video. Bye!